the kingdom of my divine will in the midst of creatures book of heaven volume 33 part 16 october 4th 1935 all the glory the love is in being able to say with facts i am a continuous act of the will of my creator necessity of the diversity of offices and of actions i was doing my round in the divine will in order to trace all of its acts done in creation to place my little i love you and unite myself with all created things to glorify my creator and be able to say I am at my place of honor. I am doing my office. I am a continuous act of divine will. I can say that I am nothing. I do nothing. But I do everything because I do the divine will. But while I was thinking this, my highest good, Jesus, making me his short little visit, all goodness told me. My blessed daughter, each created thing occupies a distinct office, and even though the will of all is one, not all of them, however, do the same thing. It would not be order, nor virtue of divine wisdom, if one created thing repeated what another does but since one is the will that dominates them the glory it receives from one another gives me as well because all the substance they possess and the good and the value with which they are invested is the fact that they can say i am a continuous act of the will of my creator greater glory, honor, and virtue he could not give me than for me to be an act of divine will. And this is so true that the little blade of grass, with its littleness, the little space it occupies of the earth, seems to do nothing. No one looks at it. Yet, because so did my will want it, nor does it try to do more than what a blade of grass can do. By doing my will, it matches the glory that the sun gives me, which with such majesty lords it over the earth, so much so that it can be called continuous miracle of all creation. And since all created things are united among themselves, the sun, with all its majesty, with its light, kisses and warms the little blade of grass. The wind caresses it. The water waters it. The earth gives it its little place in which to form its life. Yet, what is a blade of grass? one can say nothing but because it possesses my will it will have its virtue of doing good to the human generations in fact i having created everything out of love and to do good to the creatures all of them hold a secret virtue of giving the good that they possess See then how everything is in doing, my will. Never go out of its divine and interminable boundaries. By just doing my will, though it may seem that one does nothing, it is not true. The creature already finds herself together with the divine operating and can say, What God does, I do as well. Does this seem nothing to you? God does everything, and the soul, 
takes part in everything. So it is not the diversity of the actions or the offices that can make the creature say that she does great things, but it is my will that gives them value. It puts them in the divine order and places its image on them as the seal of its works. As for the diversity of offices and actions, it is rather order and harmony of my infinite wisdom. Also in heaven there are diverse choirs of angels, diversity of saints. One is martyr, another is virgin, another is confessor. Upon earth, my providence maintains many different offices. One is king, another is judge, another priest. Some form the people, some command, some others are dependent. If all did one single office, what would be of the earth? A complete disorder. Oh, if all understood that my divine will alone knows how to do great things, though they may be small and insignificant, oh, how they would all be happy, and each one would love the little place, the office in which God put them. But since they let themselves be lorded over by the human will, they would want to give of themselves, do some great action which they cannot do. And so they are always discontent of the condition or the place in which my divine providence put them for their good. Therefore, Content yourself with doing little, united with my will, and not something great without it. More so, since it being immense, it will find in you all of its acts, and you will find yourself in its love, inside its power, into its works, in such a way that you will not be able to do anything without it and it won't be able to do anything without you. Here is how, then, with the living in my will, such prodigies run together as to seem incredible. The nothing of the creature at the mercy of the all. The nothing prey to a will that can do anything. What will it not do of this nothing? It will make works worthy of a supreme fiat. Hence, the act most beautiful, most solemn, most pleasing to us, is the nothing of the creature, given to us freely, to let us do whatever we want. Fiat October 7th, 1935, one who does not live of the will of God forms his living purgatory on earth and in prison. The Divine Love A mighty storm, heart-rending scenes. My poor mind feels the need to pour itself into the divine volition as into its own center, and flinging itself into it, it feels the divine breath, heartbeat, love, and life as its own. Who could say he can live without breath, without heartbeat? No one. In the same way, my poor soul would form its own most harrowing purgatory without the fiat, and my human will would cast me into the abyss of all evils. But while I was thinking of this, my beloved Jesus, surprising me, all tenderness, told me, Blessed daughter of my will, 
how happy I feel that you have understood that you cannot live without my fiat. One who does not live in it not only forms her own living purgatory, but hinders all of my goods prepared for her. She shuts them into my heart, and causing me spasms of pain, forms the purgatory to my love. She suppresses my flames, without the relief of being able to communicate my breath, my life. Therefore I feel my breath being suffocated, my life hampered, without the good of being able to communicate myself to the creature. Now you must know that there is nothing I did which does not have as my primary purpose that of making her live of my will. The creation serves precisely for this, making the creature live of my will. And because she does not, she suffocates this life of mine in the created things. My very coming upon earth was the life of my will that I came to give her. Even more, you must know that as soon as the soul decides that she wants to live in my will, my most holy humanity takes its place in her. My blood, like pouring rain, pours upon her. My pains, like impregnable wall, surround her, fortify her, embellish her in such an admirable way as to captivate this divine will of mine to live in her. My very death forms the continuous resurrection of the soul to live in it. So the creature feels regenerated continuously in my blood, in my pains, in my love, and even in my breath, in which she finds sufficient grace in order to live of my divine will. In fact, I place everything at her disposal. Just as I kept my most holy humanity at the disposal of my divine volition, so do I place it inside and outside the creature to give life to my will in her. Now, until she decides to live in it, my blood does not rain down because it has nothing to regenerate into divine. My pains do not form the wall of defense, because the human will forms the continuous collapse of my works and renders my death as though powerless for her rising again completely in my will. And so my life, my pains, my blood, if the soul does not live of my will, remain at the door of the human will waiting with invincible patience to enter, to assail her from all sides, to give her the grace of living up my will. And unable to enter, everything remains suffocated in me, my blood, my pains, my life. And oh, how I suffer in seeing that she gives me no freedom to give her the good I want. My love tortures me. My pains, my wounds, my blood, my works, like many pitying voices, tell me constantly. This creature hinders us. She renders us useless and as though lifeless for her. Because she does not want to live of divine will. My daughter, how painful it is to want to do good, being capable of doing it, and not doing it. After this, I continued my abandonment in the divine volition, which transported me outside of myself. And oh, how horrifying it was to look at the earth. I would have wanted to withdraw into myself so as not to see anything. 
but my sweet Jesus, as though wanting me to see scenes so heart-rending, made me pause and told me, My daughter, how painful it is to see such great human perfidy, one nation deceiving another, and both dragging each other's poor peoples into torment and into fire. Poor children of mine, you must know that the storm will be so strong that it will happen as when a mighty wind transports rocks, soil, and trees with its force in such a way as to leave the area totally emptied, so much so that new plants can more easily be placed there. In the same way, this storm will serve to purify the peoples and to make the serene day of peace and of fraternal union arise. You pray that everything may serve for my glory, for the triumph of my will, and for the good of all. Fiat October 13th, 1935 The love of Jesus is so great that he feels the need to pour himself out with the creature. He, in the middle, between his celestial father and the creatures, remains struck for love of them. I was feeling all abandoned, according to my usual way, in the arms of my sweet Jesus who felt the need to pour out his ardent love. To speak about his love is an outpouring. To make us comprehend in what pains, constraints, hindrances, his love puts him, is the greatest relief for him. You know how tormenting it is to hear him with his voice suffocated and crying, fatigued, whispering, love me love me. I want nothing but love. Not to be loved is the greatest of my sorrows. And why am I not loved? Because they don't do my will. My will is the bearer of my love, and lets the creature love me with divine love. And I, feeling my love, feel relieved from the intensity of my flames, and I feel the sweet refreshment, the rest, the relief of my own love that the creature gives me. Now, while I was thinking of this, my highest good, Jesus, visiting my little soul, made himself seen enveloped in his own flames, and told me, my daughter, if you knew in what constraints my love puts me, listen to me. My celestial father was mine. I loved him with such intensity of love that I would consider myself happy to lay down my life so that no one would offend him. I was one with him, my very life. I could not be without loving him, nor did I want to. Our divine virtue formed one single love with my celestial father. Therefore I was inseparable from him. From the position of my humanity, creatures were mine, incorporated in me. I could say that they formed my very humanity. How not to love them? It would be like not loving one's own life. Oh, in what conditions, entanglements, hindrances did my love put me? I loved my father. To see him offended, was the greatest of my martyrdoms. And I loved the creatures. They were my own. I felt them inside me. 
and yet there was no offense they did not give nor ingratitude they did not commit my dear celestial father justly wanted to strike them get rid of them and in between one and the other i remained struck by the one whom i loved so much suffering their pains feeling sorry for them and while with the father i too was offended i still loved them to folly and laid down my life to save each creature i could not subtract myself from my celestial father nor did i want to because he was mine and i loved him even more it was my duty as his true son to give him back all the glory the love the satisfaction that all creatures owed him and all those struck by indescribable pains i myself wanted to let myself be struck because i loved him and i loved those for whose sake i was being struck ah only my love because it is divine knows how to form such loving inventions such hindrances as to be incredible and it forms the heroism of true love so much so that one ends up burned consumed on the stake of love for his beloved ones whom he kept as though incorporated within himself as they formed his very life ah in what constraints my love puts me it fills me so much that i feel the need of an outpouring issuing from myself surprising works pains light graces to give vent to my love and it is such and so great that i remain always inside and outside the creature to serve her and now i serve her with light in the sun to be able to communicate this outpouring of love now i serve her in the air to let her breathe now i serve her in the water to quench her thirst now in the plants to nourish her now in the wind to caress her in the fire to warm her there is nothing done by me whether in creation or in redemption in which my love unable to contain itself within itself did not come out to make an outpouring of love toward the creatures now who can tell you how much i suffer in seeing that i am not loved back how my love remains tortured by human ingratitude i reach the point of making her sins my own to grieve over them as if they were mine unto making the penance that is due I take upon my shoulders all of her evils to change them into good. I make the creature my own, fully mine, to the point of giving her a place inside my humanity as a member most dear to me. I keep inventing ever new devices of love to make her feel how much i love her and seeing myself unloved what pain what sorrow therefore my daughter love me love me when i feel loved 
my love finds its rest, and its torments of love are changed into sweet refreshments. Fiat. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 33, Part 16. Fiat.